And uh, my name is Father Pfeiffer, Father Joseph Pfeiffer, and uh, from uh, America. And uh, this is my first time to come to uh, Korea, very first time in my life. I arrived yesterday morning, but I was supposed to come at least three other times. In 2006, I was going to come with Father Onoda. Again in 2007, I was going to come here. And then again in 2011, I was going to be sent here. And uh, something happened each time where I did not come. And so now only yesterday, uh, finally uh, coming. So it's uh, and good to be here. But uh, in any case, we'll have to be brief today because uh, we, must, uh, we must depart. The Gospel for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from uh, Saint, the God of St. Matthew, chapter 22. At that time, and you can stand for the gospel. At that time, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent his servants to call them that were invited to the marriage, and they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My beeves and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come ye to the marriage. But they neglected and went their way, one to his farm and another to his merchandise, and the rest laid hands on his servants, and having treated them contumeliously, put them to death. But when the king had heard of it, he was angry, and sending his armies, he destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he saith to his servants, The marriage indeed is ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, call to the marriage. And his servants going forth into the ways gathered together all that they found, both the bad and the good. And the marriage was filled with guests. And the king went to in to see the guests. And he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he saith to him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? But he was silent. Then the king said to the waiters, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness, or there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. I'm told that the Translation will be given to you later, as we are not able to have the uh, translator now, and so the translation will be written up and given to you uh, later. But in any case, this day we are here for priests in Korea. So you would think on a day in which Four priests find themselves in Korea, four society priests, Father Couture and Father Onoda on one side of the town, and then Father Pfeiffer and Father Giselle here on the other side, that uh, this would be a time of great happiness. But in fact, since we're having, unfortunately, a little uh, conflict, which may be the sign of things to come. A conflict which we can say could have been avoided. And we wish that it was avoided. That if our society of St. Pius X maintained the same stance, and the same position, and the same teaching that it has always maintained, there would not be a division. On June the 13th, 1988, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre gave a talk to the four bishops about to be ordained bishops. And he said to them, among other things, he said, if I had accepted the protocol of May 5th, less than a month ago in 1988, if I had accepted that protocol, 
if I had signed an agreement with Rome, if we had put ourselves under Rome, the SSPX would not have lasted one year. We would be torn apart. Everything would be the cause of division. We would no longer know where we stood. And everything would be the cause of division. We would not have lasted a year. That was the warning of Archbishop Lefebvre in 1988. Putting ourselves under modernist Rome would have destroyed us. Accepting the deal of those that are our enemies... If you hand a gun to your enemy and say, please be nice to me, don't plan on living. We don't hand the gun to our enemy and say, please be nice to me, I am unarmed. We must stand firm in our faith. And we also, I got a call a month ago, Father Onoda and Father are coming to say Mass here in the chapel again. What should I do? Well, you open the doors. You let them say Mass. And Father Chazelle tried to make an agreement with the Father Couture and Father Onoda before that we will say Mass on one Sunday. You can say Mass on another Sunday. And the people can hear both sides. They can have more Masses. They have only one Mass in a month. So they can have more Masses. And we can give them the teaching. We can hear both sides of the theological discussion that we are having within the society. But then Father made a threat. If you allow Father Giselle to come here on Sunday, if you receive him when he flies in from France... We will not say Mass here again. And now they've made good on the threat. No longer coming here to say Mass. Breaking open the door, taking the vestments, taking all of the, uh, the things. Only a few remain. We're using the vestments of Father's uh, Mass kit. The cassock is gone, so we have no cassocks and so on. These things will be replaced. We will get new cassocks and new vestments in time. Our battle is not a battle over vestments. Our battle is not a battle over buildings. Our battle is a battle over the doctrine of the faith. This is our battle. And we must profess clearly the faith that we have always professed. And condemn the errors that we have always condemned. And stand strong in our faith. That's what we have to do. Earlier this week, Father Chazelle and I received our letters of expulsion from the Society of St. Pius X. We received them in Singapore. Singapore is the headquarters and uh, our superior is Father Couture, but he was not there to hand us our expulsion papers because he was here, he was traveling. Father is often out of the headquarters, he must travel many places, but he was not there to give us our notice of expulsion, and so the delegate priest had to hand it to us. But there is a crisis of the faith. We are not worried about being thrown out because we have taught what we have taught. What is necessary is to continue to teach the faith and continue to condemn the errors. And we have told our people throughout the world because the Society of St. Pius X has not yet signed the dotted line, has not yet given a full compromise over to modernism by putting ourselves under Rome. It has been delayed this summer, which is a blessing. But because it has not yet happened, we still can say that though the SSPX is very weak and not standing with the same strength and vigor that we used to stand with, nevertheless, you can still go to the masses. Just keep knowing your faith, know your catechism, say your prayers, 
Don't allow yourself to be fooled by the tricks of modernist Rome. But go to the Mass. And those who want us to say Mass for them and receive the full traditional teaching of the SSPX without any holding back, even my own brother, who is a priest of the society, we are both priests of the Society of St. Pius X. But even he had to admit to me, my older brother, he cannot speak out everything he would like to speak. We are told that we must be silent. And my brother, like many other priests, agrees with our theology, because it's the theology of the SSPX. But he has been told, you can't speak out about the agreement. Even now that the agreement is dead, you can't speak out about it. So he cannot say everything that he would be, like to say. He is partly silenced, my own brother. And so many other priests are silenced. Why are we silenced in this important matter? We are being expelled, or rather we have now been expelled, myself on October the 3rd, Father on October the 4th, just this last week, because we continue to speak the faith, the truth, without any compromise, and we will criticize a false deal with Rome, and every priest should be allowed to criticize it. In 1988, SSPX priests were allowed to criticize. And in the past, the SSPX priests were allowed to criticize. We did not always agree with each other on every detail. On the essential things, yes, but on the details, no. And we were allowed to criticize. But now there is a new Stalinistic regime in our society that there cannot be anything that is critical or may be perceived to be critical, that might be thought to be critical. And that could mean anything. We must stand for the faith. We must go here because we started a few minutes late and then we have to catch a plane after the Mass. But in any case, it's good to be here and uh, the uh, translation will be given to you uh, later. But um, God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.